What's going on everybody, Mike here. Welcome to another Symfony tutorial. Today we're going to talk about front of house training. So let's take a look at our sign-in screen. We have several ways to sign in to a workstation. We can use our fingerprint reader if your workstation has a fingerprint reader attached. We can use our employee card or we can use our employee number. To sign in, in my case I'm just going to use my test employee number here and then click the sign in key. And that will take me to this begin check area. If you have multiple revenue centers, you can also use an RVC sign in key, then swipe your card or enter your number, and that will present you with all the revenue centers available if you need to sign into a different one. Now that we are in the begin checks area, we have multiple ways to begin a check. If you are a server, most likely you're going to begin a table. If you are a bartender and you want to begin bar tabs, you can just use the begin tab bar. We can also use fast transactions if you are in a quick service scenario, such as fast foods or coffee shops. We also have programmed the begin takeout key, which basically begins a tab, but it also switches the order type to to go, so the kitchen knows to put it into go uh, bags. At the bottom, we have a cancel key that would sign us out. We can also pick up a check by a number, a functions area, and the button we use to print our employee report. If you have a table service restaurant like we do, you might even have a dining room floor layout. You can also begin a check by it from here simply by clicking on the table number and entering the number of guests. Now that we signed in, let's take a look at the different elements present on our screen. To the left, we have this check detail area where all of our menu items will start populating. To the top and bottom of the check detail area, you're also going to see table information, order type information, your check number, number of guests, your name, and then also the total here in tax. You also have these navigation keys. If the check detail area gets full, you can navigate up and down using the little arrows. To the right of the check detail area, we have these quantity buttons where we can enter multiple items at the same time. Notice if I press the two key, I can enter two breakfast buffets by hitting the button only once rather than hitting buffet buffet. To the top, we have a navigation section. So using the navigation keys here between food, drinks, we can also get to our functions area and to the pay screen. Each navigation tab has also has side tabs. In the food section, our side tabs are breakfast, lunch items, entrees, and then desserts and prep area. Inside each side tab, we also have multiple uh, dynamic slews. So a slew or a screen lookup is this area in the center where all of our menu items populate. The fact that we have multiple keys to toggle between them, we call this a dynamic slew versus something like this, which is just a static slew, meaning it doesn't have multiple screen lookups here. If you have multiple menu items on your screen, you might also have programmed a little key filter here. If you are looking for menu items that begin with an O, you can just press the O key and all the menu items that begin with an O will populate. This is very useful if, if your page is very large. You can click on the All key again to show all the menu items. At the bottom of the page, we have these buttons. The first one is a cancel button. This will help us cancel the transaction and exit out of the screen. We also have a void key and the way the void key works is we'll have to highlight a menu item and then select void. Uh, we're using seats, so we also have a seat filter. We can also reorder an item, split a check, and then we have a print, a hold key if we want to hold any menu items from sending to the kitchen, a send and stay, and a send. And we'll get into all of the details in just a second. So let's take a look at adding a menu item to the check. What I want to do is I want to add one egg to my breakfast check. We are using seat positions in our restaurant, so we'll have to enter the seat number for this menu item. I'm just going to select seat one. And then I'm going to add one pancake as well for the same seat position. And now we're going to do one egg for seat position two and one waffle. 
So these are my two guests. One of them will have one egg and one pancake and the other one will have one egg and one waffle. And notice here that we have uh, the seat positions where the items are gonna go. These are for seat position one, these are for seat position two. If we add multiple items now, we'll add a side of potatoes and also a side of sausage for seat position two. You notice as I keep adding them, they start getting mixed up. If one of the persons would like their check separate or if you would like to filter only to see seat position one, we can use this filter seat key. By pressing the filter seat key, it's gonna ask us which seat number we would like to see individually. So I'm gonna enter seat position one and now I can see all the menu items that were entered for seat position one. Now for this particular example, we just have seat one and two, but imagine you have a large table with seven or eight people and they would like to see um, how much they each, each of them has spent, or maybe they would like to print separate checks or anything like that, the seat filter can come in handy. If I click it again, I can clear the seat filter and have all my menu items populate again. Now let's take a look at entering a couple of sides of toasts. Our guests also requested three sides of toasts, so I'm gonna enter the three and then toast side. And then this is because this is gonna be shared for the table, I'm just gonna enter seat position zero. So now when the food runner comes out, they're gonna see no seat position for this particular menu item. So they're just gonna put it in the center of the table. For seat position three, we have to enter an American breakfast. So we're gonna go back to our main breakfast area and we're gonna select the American breakfast. And this is gonna be for seat position three. And now notice that this particular menu item also has required condiments. Some of the menu items will require for you to enter a type of condiment. In my case, it's just the egg, co egg cooking style, but you can also encounter this when you have uh, meat temperatures or if they get a choice of side or salad dressing. So in my case, I'm just gonna select over easy. So there we go, an American breakfast for seat position three with over easy eggs. The last item that I'm gonna add is gonna be a breakfast buffet, also for seat position three. After entering it and looking over my order, I noticed that I entered this by mistake. The person in position three already ordered an American breakfast with over easy eggs, so I ordered this by mistake. In order to correct my error, what I can do is I can select the menu item that I wanna remove and then click the void key. And notice the menu item is now gone. Removing a menu item before you send the check to the kitchen is allowed and does not require a manager authorization most of the times. Removing a menu item after the menu item has been sent to the kitchen most likely will require a manager authorization. Now that I am done with my order, I need to send it to the kitchen. In order to send my order to the kitchen, I have these two buttons here on the bottom right. I have a send and stay and a send. If I hit the send and stay key, all of my menu items will be fired to the kitchen, but I will not be kicked out of the check. If I hit my send key, that means I'm done with this order and I'm gonna get kicked out of the check. So let me show you what the send and stay does. I hit send and stay and notice that all my menu items now have a little asterisk next to them. This little asterisk means that this menu item has been sent to the kitchen and it, they already started cooking it. Now, in my case, I also need to add some drinks. So that's the reason why I didn't hit send. I'm going to my drink section, any beverages area, and I just need to add a bottle of water. Now that I am done with my order, I'm just gonna hit send. After I hit send, I got returned back to the begin checks area. And you notice my new started check is here. All of my other checks that I start will start lining up one after the other here in this, in this area. In order to pick up a check, we can just click on the check item here, or we can go back to our table layout and then pick it up from here. Another very useful key we have programmed on our screen is the reorder function. In this case, the guest asks us to reorder another bottle of water. So all I'm gonna do is go here to the reorder section, select my bottle of water, click reorder, and then hit send. This way, if you have multiple items that you wanna reorder, you don't have to find them each individually. This is particularly helpful for menu items that have multiple condiments attached to them, such as cocktails with specific items that the customer requested. Now let's take a look at opening a bar tab. 
For this, I'm going to sign out and sign into the Bar Revenue Center. I'm going to click the RVC sign in key, swipe my card, and select Bar. After we signed in, we can begin a tab by clicking the Begin Tab key here at the top or by going to the Bar section and clicking on one of the Bar's tools. I'm going to choose to use Tool 701. After I open my tab, I am presented with a classic cocktail section. This is where we're going to enter the cocktail for our guests. In this case, they each order a caipirinha. So I'm going to enter caipirinha, caipirinha. And those are my two drinks. And then I'm going to hit send and stay. Now, they also ordered one appetizer and two sandwiches. So I'm going to go to my food section, to the appetizer area. I'm going to order the ahi tuna they wanted. And this is going to be for seat position zero because they're sharing it. They also order two sandwiches. So I'm going to go to the entree section and order the two beef sliders they wanted. I'm going to order one for seat position one and the second one for seat position two. Now, if you take a look at my check detail area, I have my ahi tuna here and then also two beef sliders. Now, I don't want to send all of these at the same time to the kitchen because the kitchen might bring them all at the same time, bring them all out at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the two beef sliders by selecting it and then clicking the hold key, selecting the second one and then clicking the hold key. By holding two menu items, you already have them in the system. So you don't forget what the order was and you don't have to worry about writing them on a piece of paper. But at the same time, you're not sending them to the kitchen uh, for them to get cooked. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit send. If we go back into my check, we notice here that it has a little H on the corner. That will indicate that this particular check has held menu items on it. This is a good indicator in case you forget about them. You see the little H, you remember that you have to reopen this check and fire all of the food items. Now, notice that my ahi tuna has the little star or asterisk next to it. So that means that the kitchen has already received it and it's cooking it. As my appetizer is arriving, what I can do is I can unhold the beef sliders by highlighting them and clicking hold again and then also the second one and then clicking send. Now, as my guests are enjoying their appetizer, the main courses are also getting prepared. As my guests are enjoying their food, they also order another round of drinks. So I'm going to go and open my check here and go ahead and order another round. So I'm going to select both my caipirinhas here, click reorder and send. Now that they are done with their meal, my guests are requesting their checks and also they wanted to split this check into two people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my check and click the split check key here. Now I have two checks here. I have my check number one and two, but you can also add more checks if you have three guests or more by clicking the add check key here on the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate two drinks on one check and the other two drinks on the other check. So I have two caipirinhas here and two caipirinhas here. Then I'm going to split the big beef sliders. So each person had a beef slider. One person had a beef slider. Now they share the ahi tuna. So this is a problem uh, because obviously they want to pay it half and half. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my appetizer and then click my share item key here at the bottom. And the system is asking me in how many checks I would like to split it. So in this case, I want to split it into both checks. So I'm going to highlight both my checks and then click yes. So now one of my guests got half a ahi tuna and my other guest got half of the other half. When I'm done, I'm just going to click save here at the bottom. Confirm by hitting OK. Now the system will also prompt me if I want to print the split check. So I'm just going to answer yes. Now that the first check is printed, I can choose to print the second one by hitting the print key. Now I have both my checks printed and also separated into two different ones. So my guests can pay separate and notice the amounts are exactly half and half. After I present them with the checks, they're going to pay with a credit card or cash or gift card. So I need to close out my check. So what I do is I open it back up. I go to my payments section area. And here in the payment area, I have my credit cards here, 
I have my gift card functions here and also all of my cash. In this case, our guests pay cash. We have the multiple numerators here, like a $50 bill, $20 bill, 10 or five. We can use these depending on which money we got. We can also use the number pad by entering the exact amount and then hitting cash. If we got exact cash down to the penny, we can click the exact cash button here. And also we have this next dollar up function. In this case, my check total is $55.65. So the next dollar up would be fixed 56. So if I hit this, then the system will tell me that I have to give them change 35 cents. And now that check is closed. So we'll go ahead and close the second one as well. In this situation, what we can also do, we can pay, for example, with multiple payment methods. If the check total of $55.65, if the guest would like to pay them, let's say $20 on a credit card, what we can do is we can enter the amount here, $20, and then hit the credit card auth key, and then pay the rest in cash or some other payment method. When doing split payments, the most important thing to remember is that you have to enter the amount first, and then click the tender. Because if you click the tender first, the system is gonna assume the entire amount. Now we can take a look at the functions area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the employee function section here. And then we have a good couple of our functions. We have our employee reports, some cash draw reports, uh, also some check adjustments. And these are usually done by managers. We have our button to declare our cash tips at the end of our shift. We also have cash drawer functions. If you are a cashier or if you are a bartender and you are using a cash drawer, you will use the assign cash drawer key to start your cash drawer and assign it in the morning. And you can use the unassign to re-unassign your cash drawer when you are finished with your shift. You can also use the no sale key if you are allowed to in order to open the drawer. We also have guest check IDs functions. This is where you can change the guest check ID if you begin a tab or if the check does not have a guest check ID, you can add one. You can change the number of guests if you need to edit that. We can merge checks and split checks. So the split check key works just like the one here at the bottom. It depends on where you have yours programmed. We can also edit the seats if you need to make any changes to the seats here. Split the check by seat. This is also a very helpful function if you have seven or eight seat positions. The same filter seat key that we saw earlier is also here. We can print seat checks and this will print individual checks for each seat position. Change the order type. If for example, you want to change your order type from dine in to to go. And then also to add and transfer checks within the same revenue center or between other revenue centers. The last thing we need to do is print our employee report and present it to our manager before we go home. So to do this, I'm going to go to the report section here and I'm going to click on my employee report. Then I have to click run report here at the bottom and this should populate the report here on my screen. This will show my net sales, my tips, voids, transfers, everything that I've done throughout the day and everything that I sold. I can just hit print and the employee will print in the printer. You can after that hit close, sign out, and you are done. If you are interested in more Symfony tutorials, we have created an entire course where you can learn everything you need to maintain your Oracle Micros POS system. And as a special thank you, I also included a coupon code for you. You can find all the details in the description below. Leave a like if you found this helpful and thanks for watching.